In video two of this series on the Orbit 120, we're going to look at the menu structure. But before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about what standalone mode is. Uh, standalone mode is the mode that you can read BRF files that are downloaded from various sources like Bookshare, National Library Service, or anything that you create in Duxbury and is saved as a BRF file. The Orbit 120 does not do any translation at all. So places you can get the BRF files, like Bookshare, Learning Ally, all of those things, they're a total go, but uh, just keep in mind that if you download it in like UEB contracted Braille, that's how it's going to show up here because that's the, the file type that it is. If you do it in eBay, eBay contracted Braille, that's how it will show up here. So that's just something to keep in mind that this does not do translation. Um, okay, so back to the menu structure. Um, I'm gonna turn this off and then back on again because I want you to see and hear how the display works. So as you can hear, it's it's not a quiet display like so many of them are, but it's, it's uh, functional, so that's really what we're going for. So I'm gonna turn it on, and again, I have to hold my power button for about two to three seconds there we go, seeing that all the cells pop up and then go back down. So what is the menu? So the menu is, is where you find all of the settings for the various features of the unit. So to enter the menu, you're gonna hold down this select key in the middle of your navigation cross area and hold the up arrow. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And the first thing that's on here is the battery level. Right now, my battery is at 90%. And as you can see, this is completely, I don't know if you can, but if you can see it, this is completely uncontracted Braille. And remember, that's because there's no translation. So if your students get mad that the, that the Braille is, you know, they don't like it, that it's in uncontracted Braille, that's, that's why. You can kind of explain that to them if, if need be. So the first thing that comes up is the battery level, which is nice because that's the first thing most of us want to know about. So to navigate the menus, we're going to use the down and up arrows of the navigation cross. The next menu that's gonna come up is the cursor blink rate, and then I'm going to show you how to make adjustments. So I'm going to use the down arrow, and it says cursor, um, cursor blink, and right now it's set at one. Now you might be able to tell that this is this one is underlined. This is that seven and eight down here. It looks really weird if you're not looking for it. It just looks like a malformed U um, if you're looking at it in Braille. But if you point out that it's supposed to be an underlined, your student will probably catch on to that. So, um, so that means my cursor in an editable document will blink every second. Um, that can get a little noisy, um, and I'm going to be honest, kind of annoying. So you can change that blink rate. So remember how we used our up and down arrow keys to move among the menu choices? The menu options, you use your right and left navigation arrows. So if I wanna change this to a different blink rate, I can use my right arrow, and now it says five. Now you'll see that there's not a, um, a dot seven and eight underlining that five now. It's just five. So that's indicating that that's not the choice that is selected right now. So we're doing five, 15, oh, there's a 10 second, okay. 15, 30, 60, and zero. So sometimes if you're in class, you might wanna set that to either uh, a zero or maybe even to a five or 15 second. Um, now, if I wanted to set it to zero, I'm gonna hit the select key and as you can see right now, and it feels extremely weird when it's underlined, but that is an, that zero is underlined now. So now if I go through the menu options and find my one, it no longer looks like a malformed funky letter U in Braille. So once I've made that change, I can navigate to a new menu choice using my up or down arrow. If I wanna see what my battery is, I can use my up arrow. Battery, what do you know? We're still at 90%. Cursor. And then it pops up right away. It pops up the active choice is set to zero. 
The next menu is going to be your sort order and it's automatically set to be sorted by the name of your file. There are a lot more menu choices here, but I don't wanna go through all of them. There are a couple that I do wanna highlight. The one that I went through with you was the cursor blink, and we looked at the battery. The other ones I wanna to talk to you a little bit about are the, the ones a little further down. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll on down here. The next, the one you're gonna to wanna to pay a little attention to is the version number. Um, because when you call tech support and tell them there's something that's not working right, that's one of the first things they're going to ask you. What is the version number? And that's assuming of the of the uh, of the software, and that's assuming that it works. But if you can get to that version number, I can tell right now we're on version 1.01.51, and that is not the current version. So I'm going to need to do an update. The current version as of today's date is uh, 1.01.54. So I'll have to do an update um, at some point because that's, a, again, first thing the customer support is going to tell you. We're going to go down one. The next thing that they may ask you for is a serial number, and that is here. So that is the next, the next choice in the menu. So you can always find the serial number. I would advise you to write down the serial number either in Braille or um, in a file somewhere that you can access that is not on this device in case you need to find the serial number and give it to tech support or APH if there's a problem because really uh, if the unit isn't working and you need the serial number th there's no way you can get to it it's kind of like this like vicious circle like you need the serial number to get it fixed but you can't get it fixed to get the serial number off of it so the next thing we're going to look at here is a little further down um, actually, no, I lied. Um, it's the next option. It's reset defaults. Suppose you make a bunch of changes in your menus and you're not even sure what happened. You can reset the defaults by, um, and I'm, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to, but you would just hit the select and any defaults like your, your language and stuff like that would be just reset. So that's kind of a nice option and a nice feature that they have in there too. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about is emulating, and here it is. Um, if you are using a uh, this display with a iPhone or iPad or other iDevice that's running version 10.2 or later, you do not need to worry about this setting. Congratulations, you're done. However, if you are running, if you have an older like iPad Mini that can't be upgraded past that 10.1 whatever it is, I just usually just say 10.1. If it can't be upgraded past that, then you're going to need to do what's called emulate. So that means it's gonna to need to appear to the device you're pairing with. It's gonna to need to show up like a refresher braille 18. Um, right now our emulate is off, but I could turn it on. And if, and if I do, that would allow me to pair with those earlier versions of iOS and the only thing that it would really do is it would cut off the last two cells because again, it's emulating a refresh barrel 18 and this is an orbit 20. So that's the only thing that it would really, that would, it would really affect. Um, those are the main settings that I think are the most important. Always refer to your user guide. There's usually something in there that I don't cover, but for the most part, I think we have it. We don't need to really worry too much about all these extra things. Those are for the techie people that are gonna be doing a lot of messing around with it. So I think, I think we are good for this video. And in the next series, we're gonna take a little bit closer uh, look at the standalone mode.